right, so um, today is, this is something I just, I'm in between cohorts right now, so I have lots of free time. Um, and uh, I try to do something that isn't the same Rails app I build all the time. So in this specific case, I'm throwing a get together called Plumul Mugatti. I'll explain that later. <laughs> that, that's all about showing up and experimenting around with languages you've been meaning to try but haven't gotten around to yet. Um, and since I'm hosting it, I figure I'm not going to have any time to do with that. So instead, I'll sit down and I'll make a little API for the event itself. Um, Want to have a very simple API? Just get slash attendees. This is all JSON, by the way, because I'm going to build the front end in Elm because I'm a status. Um, masochist, whichever one of those is right. Um, so <laughs> get attendees returns all the attendees. Post creates an attendee, gets a specific ID, show, and then languages list all the languages those attendees are said they're interested in, and then languages slash lang would give you all the attendees interested in that particular language. So fairly basic sort of thing. So I sat down and thought, OK, well, what should I build this in? And the very first one, and we'll look at these three of these in a little bit more detail here in a minute. First one of these I thought about was Crystal, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, and Kamal, which is sort of the Sinatra in Crystal. Um, Rust, which is a systems programming language in Iron. And then Swift and Vapor I kind of stumbled on toward the end because they had announced a while back that Swift would be A, open source, and it is, and B, it would be able to run on Linux systems, so you could actually run it on servers. When we normally think about Swift, we think of it as Apple's mobile phone programming language. Um, but Vapor is an actual batteries included sort of web application framework <coughs> built on top of Swift that includes its own little Heroku deployment bit that makes it really pretty easy. And then I also threw together a couple of attempts half-heartedly in Elixir and then Haskell, I generated a project and then ran away screaming. <laughs> so, so Crystal is like compiled statically typed Ruby. In fact, that's one of the stated goals of the language is to look as much like Ruby as possible, except it is statically typed and it is compiled. It still does type inference where you just type stuff and it figures out what it is. Um, as it says here, most what, when I first started playing around with Crystal, I took my Ruby exorcism solutions and like just copied and pasted them over and see if they work. And they kind of did. <laughs> um, I had to change a couple of things. They don't have length on arrays. They're all size. It's just a couple of little things like that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, in fact, it's the exact same Hello World. And then Kamal is Sinatra, but in Crystal, as it says here, this might become a bit of a theme. In fact, that looks a hell of a lot like Sinatra, if not identical. And this one I got pretty far into. I'm going to show you where I ended up. So this is using sort of an application generator sort of thing for Crystal called Fez. Uh, the Bouncy application, and if we actually look at how far I got, something like this. So we have a class at attendee using this chemist model. This is actually where most of my problems with this came in was with the model. Um, I'll explain this a bit more in a minute. Um, but just post name. This was essentially trying to set up the create. And the problem I kept running into the I could never get an attendee to save. Like I generated the database that had all these columns. Everything else just would not save for the life of me. And that's because Crystal as a whole is still a very young sort of language. Um, <coughs> and as they say right here, it has syntax similar to Ruby, but compatibility with it is not a goal. Um, so the downsides to this and why I eventually gave up on it, after trying it about three different ways, because I really wanted this to work. <laughs> so the downfall of this is that this is young, and there's not a lot of people using it. So everything is in this state of everything is semi-broke most of the time, because there's not a lot of people using it. Um, the other downside, at least for this particular project, is that it's writing Ruby. You just happen to compile it when you're done. And that kind of defeats the purpose of, let me try something new and scratch. And then, yeah, everything's just kind of not quite there yet. Um, could be very soon. The other one I got pretty far in is Rust. So Rust is a systems programming language. It's not really intended to do web stuff, but people have bent it to do that because that's what we do. Um, sponsored by Mozilla, of all people. It's also, all three of these languages are kind of similar in that they're statically typed, compiled, 
and they do type inference, so you don't have to declare the types of anything ahead of time. Um, there's good old hello world. And then iron <laughs> is kind of Sinatra and Rust. Actually, that's one of the things I did was I picked a language and then I Googled, Googled Sinatra in language. Um, <laughs> That worked for almost all of them. I also did one in a little bit in Go, and Go has like five different Sinatra clones. It's fun. Um, so this is sort of the hello world in Iron. Almost everything in Rust has this function main that runs everything. Problem I ran into with Rust is documentation. There isn't a lot, and it's not very good. You can tell it's intended to be a systems language, and so it's all written by systems people. Um, and then there's a big, big jump from this, which is actually fairly simple, like hello world, and it takes a request object and it returns a response. And then we go with text. Even JSON's not that bad, but it's a big step up to, OK, now I want to save stuff to the database. Um, I got partway into that using a persistence library called Diesel that is done by uh, Sean Griffith, who's also the active maintainer of Active Record in Rails at this point. Um, so I got. Started down that path and then was like, I don't understand any of this code I'm copying and pasting. I should stop right here. Um, <laughs> so this one, <laughs> specifically in this, I ended up having uh, all these dependencies. All these, his library is called Diesel. Um, and the documentation for Diesel itself is really good, but it involves a lot of these, like, setting up the dependencies in just the right way. And then I don't know if I even got past that point. I think right about then was when I started feeling dirty and kind of ran away from it. Um, yeah, this one I never even got as far as actually setting up attendees. Um, this is basically a boilerplate one that I just tweaked around and played around with a little bit just to see how far I can get stuff. Um, but it's the same sort of idea. You have a router and you set up your routes and then you have each one of those goes to a particular method inside of this. You compile it, you run it, and then you go from there. So the one that, and then as you might have seen there, this method, unwrap, is freaking everywhere. Um, you can see it, it's there, and it's there, and it's there, and it's there, and it's there. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't do enough of this to really know what that thing does. I just know if I left it off, it didn't compile. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So what I ended up, using for this, and what actually got me across the finish line was Swift. So the fun thing about Swift is that it's just like the other ones, it's compiled, it's type inferred, it's all that sort of stuff. And it has closures, which are kind of like Ruby blocks. And they look a lot like Ruby blocks, and it's a lot of fun. Um, this is Hello World, because why not? Um, and then, as I mentioned, there was this web framework I stumbled onto called Vapor that is really well thought out as far as it's a batteries included sort of web framework. It's more than Sinatra. You can treat it like it's just Sinatra. But it comes with an ORM built in and model view controller all the way through. Um, and it actually was the one that got me across the finish line. Some of the stuff I liked about it, and I'll show these docs in a minute, they have much better documentation than most of these. It's still a young project, so those docs are occasionally a little out of date, a little behind what's current. Um, but they look real pretty. Um, <laughs> built-in ORM, and it has relationships, many-to-many, one-to-many, all the way down. I didn't actually use them for this because it's a very simple application, but it's all in there. Built-in deployment pipeline of Roku. I was I got done with this app, and then I'm like, how am I going to get this to deploy? And it turned out there's a command called Vapor Heroku that walks you through the steps and actually launches it up there. It works great. And then type-safe routing, which I'll show a little bit of, is super kind of fun where you can say, like, this show page expects a user in the param, so it automatically loads it based off the ID out of the database and makes it available. It's a lot of fun. So what I ended up with that one was something that looks like this. I'm opening it in Vim just because I can't figure out how to get Xcode to make the text bigger. So. This particular one, um, this is before Swift now has an actual package manager. Um, this isn't it. It also has sort of RBN, they have Swift in, so you can switch between different Swift versions. Um, this one, in this case, I'm using MySQL because that's all Vapor supports right now. They have other of these sort of providers available, which are sort of the hooks into their ORM 
for uh, Postgres and Reddit, and I think they have one for Mongo floating around. Mo not Reddit, Redis. Um, but most of them are in various states of not quite ready. The only one that is is my SQL, so I had to use that. Um, but then everything is inside sources, and then main.swift, which you can treat a lot like a Sinatra file. In fact, I'm doing it in one place right here. It was basically, I got fed up with trying to make these resourceful routes work for this and just threw up my hands and like, screw it, I'll treat it like Sinatra. Um, so your droplet is sort of the thing that's managing the whole thing. And so it get requests to languages and it expects to get a string. So it automatically converts whatever that parameter is into a string. You can also, if it's an int, you can make it an int. All that fun stuff. And that's the request. And then lang name is the second thing. right? And then we query attendees and filter for languages containing that particular lang name. And then return those <coughs> attendees converted to JSON. Um, really not that bad at all. The resources things you can see up here, like let attendees equal attendee controller droplet drop, um, those go into actual proper controllers. So this, for instance, is the attendee controller. So this is all the indexes. Just load all the attendees out of the database, convert it into JSON, return it. Um, this is instead of create and Rails land, and here it's generally called store. It doesn't have to be. I'll show that in a minute. Um, but in this case, Actually, don't know that I need that line anymore. That would have been thrashing around trying to get things to work. Um, one note about Swift, it does not have nil. Nothing can be nil, and it will bark at you if something could be nil, which is why these double question mark things are there. It's kind of like a nil guard in Ruby land. In languages, by the way, I'm just doing a comma separated string because it's my SQL, and I didn't feel like figuring out my SQL array problems. So as a consequence, the languages controller so the languages controller right, was the first place I actually got to play around with Swift itself rather than just the vapor framework because since I'm just storing these as comma separated strings and by the way this event has like 20 people in it so I don't have to worry about hey I'm loading all of them and all that sort of stuff so just load them all and then flat map. And here's an example of that closure I was talking about earlier, where this is like the block level variable sort of thing that we have in RubyLand, that's sort of dollar zero. So languages and then components separated by, this is splitting it on the commas. So this creates an array of all the languages and then this set is, I'm stripping the white space off. Some of this stuff is still a little verbose and swift. They're only on version three at this point. Um, and they do a new version every six months, it seems like. Um, so change it into a set, and then change it back into an array. This is essentially replicating unique in RubyLand. And then return JSON of just those languages. Um, Swift itself, again, is a lot of fun. Um, the, this is the first time I've worked with compiled languages since I was probably a freshman in college, which for me was 20 years ago. Um, so it was kind of fun to have error messages just when you tried to run the thing. It's a little frustrating at first, but once you get used to it, it's actually a little bit quicker. Um, the other nice thing you'll notice that middleware over there. So since it's a web API and I'm going to be using it somewhere else here in a minute, I actually have cores set up in the middle of it, which is just setting a couple of headers uh, on the way out. And then models are like this. So you have a struct, which are kind of like structs in Ruby as well, with an ID, a name, a bio, and languages, and then you set the type of those. And then this node convertible and make node, these two things are what sort of serializes and deserializes to the database in JSON. So this is how it gets into the database, and this is how it gets turned into JSON each time. And then finally, this doesn't have any sense of migrations or anything like that. So instead, they have what are called preparations for the database. So in this case, it is creating a table called attendees with an ID, a name, a bio, and a language. And bio and languages are both optional. And so one of the things I do in name.swift, you notice up here at the top, this let drop equals droplet preparations. 
that's where it's basically checking to see do I need to migrate the database and it just kind of does it automatically, automatically actually. And then I set up the provider to be this Vapor MySQL provider, which is essentially hooking it into the database. It also has another thing that's kind of familiar, Rails, it has config folder that you'll notice, this is my development config. Y'all can see my password, it's fine. <laughs> um, and then there's a production folder that has production in it as well. And again, the Heroku thing was uh, Vapor Heroku, and then it walks you through sort of a wizard each step through. Like, do you want a custom name? Do you want a custom build pack? You do need to use a custom build pack for this. Um, and then it launches, and it works. Uh, in fact, I can show you right now. Now well, let's do it in the server. So, Plum Bugatti, I think. Plum Bugatti. Okay. What? <laughs> it's, it'll, it'll make more sense in a minute. Yeah. Can you say it again? Like, it'll, it'll, it's not the real word. Programming <laughs> 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 languages. All right, anyway, it is running, I can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is working. I just can't remember what I named the thing. <laughs> so, some downsides to this. This is a moving target. It's still fairly new. Most people are using Swift or using it on phones. One of the nice things about that is that there are lots of users of Swift. So when I got to that point of like, okay, how do I take this array of stuff and flatten it? Oh, I can Google that. And then, holy shit, there's flat map. Yay, old friend. Um, <laughs> and then how can I make a unique array? How can I split on a comma? It's very imminently Googleable, which really helps a lot. Um, one of the downsides is when you vapor new, because it has a generator for a project, kind of like Rails new, um, it includes a lot of boilerplate crap. Because they're treating the new, the newly created application as sort of documentation in and of itself. So it includes lots of the features and everything else that so you have to wipe all that out if you actually want to be productive with it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is MySQL only at the moment, unless you want to roll your own persistence, which I was in a hurry. I didn't feel like doing that. Um, so. Now to the plug portion of this. So, plug on Magadi, which is programming languages I've been meaning to try but haven't gotten around to yet. So, <laughs> um, it's essentially a six hour meetup of sorts at the Iron Yard campus downtown at 47. 25, 75, 75. Uh, 75. Thank you, 475. I was in a hurry. Um, East Market Street, uh, downtown in the Art Street building, about a block east of City Market. Um, I provide breakfast, which is mostly coffee, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> um, and lunch, which will uh, probably be a taco bar. Yeah. So I didn't want to do pizza, it'll be a taco bar of some sort. Um, and we have good Wi Fi, and we'll have some programming books. And mostly it's just come in, hang out, experiment with things like Swift, Rust, Crystal. Some, every one of us, I think, has some programming language that is like, wow, that seems interesting. When I get a free weekend, when the wife and kids are out of town, I'll sit down and do that. And inevitably, we don't do that. We just live in a drunken stupor while we get it. Um, <laughs> just me? Um, so, <laughs> so instead, this is sort of scheduled time to actually sit down and play around with that language you've been meaning to get around to. Um, it'll be a fun time. Uh, we have about, we, um, there are about 14 spots left. Um, so if you go to that address, um, <laughs> you can get Please. signed up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did want people to have to remember, anytime I type it out, I still have to say it out loud. Like programming languages I've been meaning to try, but haven't gotten around to yet. I've been typing PL and banging on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not come up with this idea, just to be fair. This is an actual thing. So um, these have been done in uh, Portland and London and lots of other places. Um, we are next on the list, right there. So that's a week from Saturday. Um, and it is, as it says here, it's uh, it's very much sort of a party, a very nerdy party, um, <laughs> with lots of people on laptops. And I encourage you all to show up. Uh, I will have coffee, breakfast, and uh, um, <laughs> name tags. We have lots of whiteboards. We have one couch. 
Um, we're we're going to have some reference books supplied by um, Scale Assembly, who's our sponsor. Um, lunch, taco bar. Um, we'll have some signs with names of programming languages, and we'll probably do a little bit of a show and tell at the end that's probably very similar to what I just did. So ours will be about six hours, so nine to three. Um, have fun, everybody. So, can we make sure the show and tell is recorded? I uh, know. Are you showing up? Yes, I'm okay. I can't go anymore. <laughs> well, make sure you unsubscribe. We only have 14 yes, spots. Yes, no, on. exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going. All right. I'm going. All right. Awesome. Good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey. <laughs>